seeking to make the organizers of that rally and others who took part pay a steep financial price. Tonight we have new information on the case and some of the key players in court. A horrific weekend of violence, which further exposed America's racial divisions. This is our town now! Tonight, people injured at the infamous Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, are seeking justice. The jury is now chosen, setting the stage for a civil trial to begin tomorrow, targeting the organizers of the 2017 gathering for white supremacists. The claim? That they knowingly planned for violence and should be held liable. With its Nazi slogans like blood and soil, a torchlight march the night before, and vicious battles in the streets, the rally shocked America with its brazen racism and anti-Semitism. And the equivocation from then-President Trump poured fuel on the controversy, seemingly legitimizing the alt-right, white supremacists, and white nationalism in America. You had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Dozens were injured in street brawls. The violence culminated with a white nationalist, James Fields, plowing his car into a crowd of counter-protesters. One of them, 32-year-old paralegal Heather Heyer, was killed. Several others were injured. One of the nine plaintiffs is Liz Sines, who says Fields' car almost hit her. I will never forget watching them attack my fellow students or the feeling of running from my life. Another plaintiff is Natalie Romero. The lawsuit says she was hit by Fields' car, causing a skull fracture and a concussion. And Marcus Martin, seen here in midair, who said his leg was broken and he couldn't work for nine months. The lawsuit says social media posts and imagery by organizers suggested violence. Discussions in their chat rooms of bringing guns, quote, cracking skulls, even running over protesters. The lawsuit is replete with example after example after example of how these defendants and their co-conspirators intended to commit violence. Comments like, next stop Charlottesville, final stop Auschwitz. But the defendants, who include some of America's most notorious white supremacists, have several potential arguments against liability, that free speech is protected, that they are not responsible for the actions of others, and that the police failed to keep order. To win a court judgment under the Ku Klux Klan Act of 1871, the plaintiffs have to prove there was a conspiracy to engage in racially motivated violence. It's a demanding standard, but there's an enormous amount of evidence. Uh, the plaintiffs are going to put on a quite lengthy case with lots of testimony and lots of evidence, especially from online discussions that anticipated uh, the Unite the Right rally. The plaintiffs say one of their goals is to bankrupt white supremacist organizations and members. Even before this trial began, at least one defendant claimed that he was financially crippled. Richard Spencer, a white nationalist alt-right leader who is representing himself in this case without a lawyer. Wolf? All right, Brian. Thanks very much. Brian Todd in Charlottesville for us.